the Kai Kōrero Tuatei. We're now going to move to our second Kai Kōrero pertaining to this kaupapa. Uh, Raumona Radford Ngaitai Ngāti Parau, Portfolio and Lead Indigenous Wood Products uh, Skion, uh, supporting a coalition of Māori forestry interests and momentum for a national strategy on Indigenous forests. So let's head now to Raumona. Kei akwe. Tēnā koutou. Um, Sion. What did I say? Ko tainui mā tātua horau te waka, uh, ko au, ko Ramona Radford. Um, my grandmother, uh, Sarah Waihi, was born in Waiomatatini um, and raised in Nuatoria um, at Te Nātuka. Her father uh, was Mohi Nākaho Waihi. His father, Hamana Waihi Nākaho. His father, the carver of the uh, one of the carvers of the original Waitangi meeting house um, was Tamati Nakaho. He was a tohunga whakairo and angatira mō Our carving traditions stem from the fusion of our dual whakapapa, uh, which is uh, te iwi Māori, obviously, and uh, te iwi Navajo, or the Navajo Nation. Um, hence the transliteration of Nākaho. Uh, our whānau moved on from these lands to other places. My tūranga waiwai is Te Hānoa uh, in tō Tōrere. It's the landing place of the Tainui Waka and it's the home of my grandfather's fathers back to Manākiao uh, of Te Tūne o Toi and even earlier uh, connection to Tairawhiti and Papatuanuku. My mother was the first head girl of Ngata College, um, and these are my connections to Tairawhiti. Tēnā koutou. Uh, so I am Tangata Whenua, generations born out of this land, a forest owner, a hapu land owner, and now I'm a nanny. And it's these identities that establish my interest in forestry. My connection to research and innovation comes through my professional life uh, as a commercial developer. I work at Scion, there's a Scion on, on, the, um, on the slide here. Um, it's a government owned research institute based in Rotorua with a mandate to drive the innovation and growth of New Zealand's forest and bio-based industries. Um, Sion's history began shortly after the decimation of the great forest Te Waone Atane for farming and human occupation in the 1800s. Um, in 1893, the first exotic trees from across the world were planted here on this pa, which is known as Te Tokorangi. Our pa site sits at the edge of what is now Whakariwarewa Forest on the northern side of the uh, central North Island pine forest, which is also known as Kaingaroa Timberlands. It's a beautiful place. Um, we know from Ngāti Huringa Te Rangi that hapū um, that were once here, that this was their main hunting ground. There were, this uh, place was abundant in in Manu um, and flooded with biodiversity until the Tarawira eruption in uh, 1839. To survive, the local people took jobs from the new settler government and the land was set aside for growing forest under the control of that government. And here began the innovation and hybridization of three pines that came from overseas in which we now know as the radiata pine. Here we typically do um, forest science. We grow trees faster for different purposes and we try to use our research to have an influence on where trees are planted and how they are cared for. Yes, Scion led the innovation of the fastest growing pine tree in the world. Um, but we also were the first nation, uh, thanks to the research carried on in this institute, 
for plantations for timber and also the world's first pro wood processing plants were innovated here on this campus. And now we are moving into the third generation of forestry here in Aotearoa, which is a forest-based circular bioeconomy. Here we're designing forests for a climate change and disease affected world. Um, our new vision for this third generation of forestry is a forestry industry in 2030 that has embraced our Māori values, R&D, and make space for the future generations to be heard and prioritised to the benefit of all New Zealanders. In short, um, why is this? In short, um, it's because forestry is an essential po in a climate and disease affected world and because forestry needs to be doing things better. From this point forward, it needs to be cleaner, fairer and smarter. It needs to be done differently. It needs to take into account the downstream effects of decision making. And that is why Te Ao Māori is uh, being embraced and why we're bringing in Māori partners to help us innovate the next generation of forests. Across the world, forests and other precious ecosystems like wetlands, uh, kelp forests, oceans, um, have been identified as tools for mitigation, mitigating climate change and other, uh, other um, issues relating to pollution and uh, extractive industries. Here in Aotearoa, we have instruments like the ETS a short, as short-term solutions, but to manage our damage to the planet, we need more greenhouse gas factories. And that is essentially what trees are. Ideally, forests um, that are long-term are for emissions reduction and forests that are short to medium term are for returning uh, income, livelihoods and prosperity to communities, New Zealand and the world. With indigenous forests, we get both. The problem I see as far as the effort being poured into a forestation activity um, to this point is the short sightedness of humans, which is their impatience, uh, which results in cutting corners and the constant need to put things into tidy boxes and work nature like a linear process. Nature doesn't work like this. Um, so we as human, as a human race, um, are still going through a long education about nature. What we need to be doing is finding ways to adjust our modern demands to meet the natural cycles of forests. For this reason, I am leading the work to revive values-based forestry and the contribution of Matauranga Māori to that. Identifying approaches and regions that support living forest economies. The only way of life that existed for my whānau and many of yours less than three generations back from me. I still recall my grandparents and their reverence for the Nahiri. Their way of life was completely constructed around that. The idea that each tree is a sentient being, binding with the modi of other beings, including us as humans, with a purpose to cloak the whenua and to keep the system, or the great forest, alive and connected to Ranginui, sky and atmosphere. It is my personal belief that all of our national practices and actions should be aligned to this understanding, not just Māori lands and practices. There are also ways to apply science and economy to this distinctive view to ensure prosperity for all. 
As Scion continues to inform government's strategy to pivot from the old ways of cutting things down and bearing papatuanuku to the, the elements, digging things out of here, as we, as we innovate a newer, better world, we need to look at things differently. <clears throat> the first milestone to that uh, will, it will take place through the Paris Climate Agreement uh, in 2030, which is only nine years away. To do that, we need to put the right tree in the right place for the right purpose. What this describes is a circular bioeconomy which is frequently expressed as a response to the challenges of climate change. We, um, as researchers, governments and um, sectors, speak less often about its potential to create a fairer, cleaner and smarter world by doing things differently. But that is the intention. In a world where there is a commitment to do things differently, indigenous trees and the benefits that they provide will become chief enablers. A forest-based circular bioeconomy would set up a comparative advantage for Aotearoa and for Te Ao Māori. Our climate and weather suits growing trees um, and it would also complement as an offset for other primary sector land uses. The projects that make up my portfolio will drive the impact of distinct value indigenous wood products, but they are only part of the, of the interconnection between forests and products. Here you see displayed on the screen, the 11 portfolios in Scion that are being developed to transition us into a forest-based bioeconomy. What if we were to imagine uh, products that are driven by local narratives and provenance that link to land-based cooperatives and smart regional supply chains that could be integrated through partnership and technology? An industry that's driven by demand, not supply, where multiple horizons of income can come from a single forest. Um, that type of industry and sector would be differentiated by Te Tiriti principles and partnership, sustainable forest management and Modi level forest maintenance and novel premium wood and bio-based value chains. These are products from trees that have mana. Some of, some of the critical issues that stand in the way of a vision like this and that we are working to move out of the way with other partners include um, the lack of a treaty approach to forestry, uh, current policy regulation and incentives that are out of step with a forest-based bioeconomy vision for Aotearoa, uh, low social license for indigenous wood products due to an inadequate reset of New Zealand's dichotomy of conservation on one end and pine forest on the other without any cognizance of uh, the ability to fill in the space between. Also the inertia and insufficient commitment to R&D to identify and remove blockages and enable Indigenous wood aspirations and investments of landowners and communities and regions. All of these critical issues add up to low certainty for markets and growers and limited freedom to operate. Scion pushes uh, for hero regions and demonstrations of what communities want Otherwise, how will we transition long-term forest value chains to a better world? There is value in demonstrating a distinct value mindset that is not volume-based or about reaching critical mass. Um, 
there is value to well-being and next generation benefits of medium to long-term investments which are not currently valued inside of our GDP focused nation. How do we value these forests across time and establish plantations and industries, measure the well-being and targeted impact for intergenerational economics? Over the next few years, the 10 years up until 2030, um, nine years, sorry, <laughs> 25,000 hectares of forest need to be planted each year in order for us to meet our Paris climate agreements. Of these, 8,250 hectares must be native. At Scion, we want to demonstrate how wood product value chains play a role in incentivizing and promoting healthy economic stocks and flows and incentivize planting. Without a return or a plan for how we can um, uh, turn some of this wood and some of these forests into revenue to support the activities of kaitiakitanga and um, planting and land-based um, decision making, uh, we're, we're really not going to be able to achieve this. Um, most of all, therefore, we need a treaty-based approach to forestry one where Māori have the support to lead out and demonstrate the potential of Indigenous thinking, creativity and innovation, holistic approaches to wellbeing and livelihood, customary kaitiaki tanga practice, and what we mean by Y262 um, and how the benefits can flow back to our communities and to our whenua. Although we really we, Scion, uh, really engage with uh, individual land blocks. Because of our national and global focus, we are available to support a coordinated tairawhiti. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. There, e te whānau, ngai tai, ngāti pro, portfolio lead Indigenous wood products and Scion, as, as opposed to Skion which I said earlier, not that anyone noticed. I may have had one or two messages, just quietly. Hoi anō.